never did we ever think we'd be living through something like this. Dating, love, <laughs> um, intimacy. Everyone was after that because that's the one thing you needed. Bitcoin. This is a story about love. Hi, babe. You all right? And how a year of all-round craziness... Just place them down and step away. <laughs> ..made us search deep inside. Day 100. 100 days in quarantine. Changing everything. Transforming the rules of romance. I'm not sure whether to stand up and give you a hug or whether to do sort of social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this two years? <laughs> we filmed seven people. Wait a bullet. Let's try Tinder. Some searching. I hate being single. Some married. And some only one date in. <laughs> as they follow their hearts through extraordinary times. Keep two metres apart. That changed our love lives forever. He is like he is in the pictures. Oh, hop, hop, hop. Come to Mama. <laughs>
I mainly just stayed in my room, to be honest. I was matching with people all over the world or all over England. Every guy I've spoken to during lockdown has ghosted me. Fucking hate men. At first, I thought I was like, oh, it's great. Like, I get a bit of a break. Um, but then the break turned into two weeks and then two months and then four months. And you're like, I hate being single. For the lockdown and lonely, digital dating was the only way to search for love. Online dating grew by more than 80%. A lot of people look at me, but not that many people say they like me. <laughs> hmm. Meet the utterly charming Louise. I've got myself on there as Amelia. <laughs> Thought I'd make myself a bit more exotic sounding. <laughs> it's a really unique time. It's weird, isn't it? This one who I thought was really attractive. We had some really nice chats. And he told me not to disappear. Please don't disappear on me, Louise. And then I messaged him the next day. Never heard from him again. I faced lockdown alone, which has been bloody scary. I'd had a massive drop in confidence because I had quite a serious illness two years ago and my husband left me. So I had huge issues and I wanted to feel attractive again. I wanted to know if I could attract somebody. So what way do you do that? Because you can't go out. So I just thought I'll see what happens by putting my pictures on, see if anyone likes me. So I wrote, not sure if this is the right thing to do during a worldwide pandemic, but hey ho, I am big hearted. <laughs> Giving. I can't believe I'm reading, writing this. I believe in good manners and respect for each other. Thank you for looking. I think I need to reword that, actually. Waiting to emerge from lockdown with new zest. <laughs> Funny enough, I've just had five views. Six now. <laughs> For single people, isolating alone looked daunting. But worse still was the thought of lockdown with your ex. I'm going to show you some of the products and things that we need to get started. Some eyebrow waxing strips. You can see that I've cut a big strip into small eyebrow sized pieces. Single mum Emma is a beauty therapist from Bradford. So I've just sterilised my tweezers and my scissors. Unable to see her clients in person, she's doing online tutorials instead. My speciality is, is lashes and, and brows. I do the henna brow, I do like brow artistry. The certificates here are the tip of the iceberg. I like to think I've got a good reputation in the village. Emma has a five-year-old son called Cole <laughs> with her ex-partner, Dean. Yeah. They married seven years ago, but separated last year. You had her on Saturday, didn't you? Oh, she's, she's coming. Did you not bring Cole with you? Apparently he's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> Here you go, snacks ready. Be careful, you don't want to be wearing it. Despite living apart, Emma and Dean have made the tough decision to lock down together. I'm up here because I want to be near my son, so obviously it made sense to isolate together and to be around Cole. It is over now, we won't get back together, but, you know, we're parents for Cole and we need to get along. Is this a Coley show? There you go. I'll put your robot up here. We split up when Cole was about a year old. We got back together for about maybe a year and then we split up again. So, yeah, we like, we tried to make it work and couldn't. I'm not people take pieces ready, but because my life is particular, 
I'm still in the kitchen. Nice for you. Our relationship is quite volatile. and we're not very good at communicating. But you know, we're the only two people that Cole can be around. We're not allowed to visit family or friends or anything. We're not allowed to go out of the garden at home, really. Going up. So we're both trying just to get along because we believe that that's the best for Cole. That was a good elevator. Give it a big hug and a big hug. I will do. As the weather warms up, lockdown has relaxed and parks are the place to be for some summer loving. As long as you can do it from two metres apart. What's your sort of plan for socially distancing during this day? I don't think there is a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Boris. Bradley's lined up a guy called Tom for their first date, not on a screen. And what are you looking for? I do want something serious. I've been single for, I think it's about two years now, and my last relationship was four years. It was very intense. Um, and I'm finally ready to kind of put myself with someone else now. I'm ready to give, like, another 100%. Me and my ex-boyfriend, in my head, it was like the one person you meet, you're going to be with the rest of your life, and it's like that one massive thing. Yeah, when that ended, it was, it hit me hard. Like, a lot harder than I thought. I guess during lockdown, not having, like, a partner or something, it's made it more difficult, I guess, to cope with. It's nice to have that other person that knows exactly what you're going through. Oh, this is cute, though. I've never... How have I never been in here? Neither have I. I'm just over lockdown. Officially. I was over lockdown a long time ago. I mean, yeah, I think we all are. Oh, God. Mm-mm. I don't think. Fashion. I, I just like. cannot. I like it. Mm-mm. Uh, I can't wait for the clubs to open again. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. November. Oh, my God. What's New Year's going to be like? Socially distant. Oh, OK, so what is that? Boris Johnson has slashed, has slashed the two metre rule. Since when? Just now. So it's no longer existent? <laughs> <laughs> well, Boris? Uh, yeah. Boris Johnson, I oh, hate okay, to say you can, it. You can move closer then. I've not <laughs> Wait, is this two metres? <laughs> One centimetre. There Boris Johnson, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> We do kiss. Like every human being, like bases everything off of touch. Like we do, like you see a friend, you hug them. Um, see someone you love, you kiss them. And to not be able to do that or even have the chance to, or the opportunity or even be allowed to, because it's against the law. <laughs> like being told that you can't do that, it's the one thing we want to do the most. Wales, it's taking longer for the restrictions to be eased. For couples who don't live together, it's tough times. Can I just just put that back so your leg go all a bit? Then? That's separate. It's like I'm sorry, Fion. No, it's right. You're so cute. Come on. To pull, I don't want to miss Fion you. lives with her mum. Not able to see her long-term boyfriend, she's keeping busy posting social media updates on the latest government advice. Hello, Fion here. I am very excited that we announced Wales has got bubbles. I've been watching the news. I'm doing what the news says. And giving the messages. I'm giving the messages out. And the what leaders. is going on? So in Wales, we are in a garden two metres apart. We're family and friends. Just keep two metres apart. They've got a big tagline you always tell I them. Have, what do you always yes. tell them? And remember, Kitchen and have a drink, and you can as well too. Cut is like a hug. I haven't been seeing my boyfriend Ben at least four months. 
I miss him every day, and I ring him, and he, I text him to see how he's doing. Hiya. Hi, yeah. Hi, babe. You all right? I, I think it's different by my hair. Very nice. Oh, thanks, babe. I'm, I'm missing you, babe. I know. I miss you too. Yeah. And when my sister's all over, we can go for a meal again. Yay! Do you like your wine? Of course, babe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, babe. Okay, baby. All right. Bye, gorgeous. Bye-bye. Love you, babe. Love you, too. That was so nice to see him. Just, just his face, just to see him, really. Drunk, and we're gonna cook Nanaimo bars. We're gonna cook it. So, ready, steady, chocolate. It's been three months since Claire and Jade's first date. You can smash five of them up. Eight, eight, eight. So, <laughs> eight, eight. Just five. Right. They've lived together ever since. A doggy, a duty bag, and smash, smash it with a hammer. Right. Claire is an absolute tornado. Like, 100%. As much as it will be Sounds messing with this, at the same point though, she'll like it's just kind of like she'll captivate you, and it's just kind of like, well, this is just happening. What? Jade, 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 she's lovely. Like she's lovely. Like she's always happy. I think, and I can be a little bit dark some days. And I think when we we're on lockdown and I had a bad day, even in the morning, if I woke up on the wrong side of the bed, she would just still be like. <laughs> eggs, avocado, and like kind of kept me up, you know, kept me happier than I've been in a long time, I think. Yeah, it's going to bounce a bit. Yeah. <laughs> like it's quite hard to drag her down. And even if I tried, like, no, I'm dark, you, you, you drown with me. <laughs> she just won't go that. So it's, no. yeah, it's nice. I think. So it works. Yeah. That was gay as fuck. Oh, so you're gay as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you're gay as fuck. <laughs> so that, that is how you make. And now I'm bar. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Lockdown was just a fast forward. Like, I can never pinpoint what it was, but like, I've got this habit, like, when I'm standing having, like, a, a cigarette, like, I kind of stand living the door with the back door open, and you're usually on the couch, and it's just like, she'll just look up, and I'm just like, oh, I love you. And she's like, all right. Right. Well, because I didn't tell you back. No, That's what happened. Me, yeah. You said it to me, you poked your head out, and you just went, I love you, and then poked your head back, and I was like, I didn't say anything, and it was the next morning, the first thing when I woke up, mm. and I said, I love you I love you too, by the way. I was just a bit taken aback when you said it mid-fag break. I was like, fuck, it's been 12 hours. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't sleep, I was lying like this. I don't know whether to wear um, something a bit floaty and pretty, or just stay like this. Today, Louise has a date. And I think I'm going to look a bit like a tent in that. She's been shielding and hasn't been near a bloke for three months. I think I'm just going to go and keep this on. Cash. It's quite good to meet someone when you're not all glammed up because then it's the real you, isn't it? <phone rings> Two years ago, I had a brain tumour. It took quite a lot of recovery and I put on about three stone. I then got married, brain tumour surgery, going on steroids, it really changes you as a person, and it was obviously very hard for him. He was with me one day, and then suddenly he'd gone. So I lost a lot of confidence. Also, at a certain age where you think, oh, I'm 50 now, who's going to want me? I don't know, I just feel really emotional, even now, just talking about it. God, the poor bloke meeting me this afternoon. He's going to think, oh, she's a wreck. <laughs> Did I go on a date? Um, I haven't been on one since my since my husband. Okay. Oh, he's coming over. Should I walk towards him? Louise's date, Rob, is a forty-something fellow divorcee. 
<laughs> How are you doing? I'm all right, yourself? Yeah, yeah. good. Are you, are you coming in, is it? I don't know, but <laughs> Well, when you're arranging a date in lockdown, it's difficult to know what's going to be open and what's not. Yeah, so here we are. Can you feel any magic? I can feel the heat. That's what I can feel. <laughs> if I say, yeah. You might have to take your jacket off. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's kind of... I can't take my eyes off of them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like it's sort of mesmerising. Mm. You can't see a little drink? Yeah, I can do. Cheers. Nice to meet you. <laughs> you can see out of the sun. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Do I feel my dodgy head? I feel my soft bits. <laughs> I could say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> you could say the same thing. I don't know if that's a bit intrusive. Feel, feel it. Can you oh, feel wow. there's a hole? I can, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so lucky I'm not disabled because when you have brain operation, you, know, you can end up. Yeah, exactly. They warn you about everything, yeah. yeah. I don't like to tell people because I think, as a potential boyfriend as such, it yeah. might be really off putting for a man to know that. Do you think well, it would I, be? I, 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 in my honest opinion, you are. These are part of who you are. Yeah. It makes yeah. you what you are. Your experiences, what's led you to this point, makes you. And to yeah, disavow it and yeah. ignore it yeah. is, is wrong, in my opinion. Yeah. Better let you get home to your, to your oh, kids. I think I'm far so I do need to get off, yes. But it's yeah. been great though, it's been really, oh, really good. Oh, it's been lovely. Thank yeah. you for meeting me up here. <laughs> okay, we're going for a walk and having a drink. Thank you for the drink. I did warm to him. I was warming to him, but I think that was just being, do you know what I think it was? It was just being in a nice pub and not being in a pub. For, I haven't been in a pub garden for so long, like five months. And I just think I, oh, this is going to sound awful, but it could have been anyone sat there with a pulse. I would have warmed to them. You know, because he was a man. I haven't been near a man for months. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Separated couple Emma and Dean have been isolating together for the sake of their son, Cole. Get out. <laughs> With an easing of the rules, they're having some family time in the Yorkshire sun and the old tensions are starting to thaw. The first few weeks, we kind of did his heads in. Yeah. We were still a little bit feisty with each other. Yeah. Angry for no reason. It took, a, it took about a month. So it's been a bit of a revelation, not doing each of his heads in. Did you expect that to happen? No. I do think um, the reason for us having such a volatile relationship has been my inability to confront things. We were in lockdown and our wedding song came on um, and I started to get a little bit upset. So we decided that we would actually talk about losing, losing our first son Isaac. I was over five months pregnant Five in the morning, I woke up. The bed's soaking. I said, Dean, my waters are broken. So we went to the hospital and they said, we've got to deliver your baby. We've got to. You're getting too unwell. This has turned into, you've got an infection. It's sepsis. We need to deliver him. But he's not old enough to survive outside. He's not old enough yet. I said, no, no, I won't. By the time he came back, I wasn't even conscious. And the doctor said to Dean, we deliver the baby or your wife dies. And so Dean just said, I can't make that decision. I can't. He said, she'll die then. So Dean said, right, fine, do it. Well, what went wrong was, you know, we lost a child. And not being able to speak to each other. So then we were just completely, we were poles apart. I just thought, you know, I've, I've killed his baby. How can he actually even want me around him anymore? But we just decided that we'd split up because there was no understanding. In lockdown, because everything stopped, it gave us an opportunity to speak, but it wasn't forced. Nobody started asking about it. It just kind of, it just kind of came. Lockdown, Friday night. How are you doing, guys? All right. 
we've been to counselling and everything, you know, to try and get over it, and um, it always just seemed to make it worse. We never realised that yeah. it's us that need to talk. <laughs> It is the 5th of June and it's date night tonight, so instead of Jade cooking, we are... Guess where we are? Where are we? McDonald's! <laughs> uh, yeah, so we've waited for how long now? Uh, 27 minutes. Half an hour so far in the car. In Scotland, it's midsummer, but more important still, drive throughs are open again. So we're almost at the front. And some Someone's guys radiators fucking went in their car. radiators gone and now we are all stuck. Tow that car out. I can almost taste the burgers. Really nice. <laughs> Yay. Claire and Jade's romance is zooming ahead. And this is a milestone moment for any couple. It's meet the parents time. It's in your bag. Well, she made us bring our own everything. Our own food, our own glasses. You want your mum to like them, even if you're a bit rebellious. I used to have a mohawk, so I'm like, I just tried to piss her off no matter what I could do, like by dating these ridiculous looking people. But my mum saw me through a lot of like bad relationships or. Sorry. A lot of shit. Um, so she was a bit hesitant, I think, with Jade when I said, Oh, I found someone. She was like, Hmm. Like, I thought you were going to work on yourself. You know, I think you shouldn't be with anybody. You know how it ends up, you know how it goes. So I think she was a bit funny at first. And then I think daily updates when I was speaking to her and I was like, me and Jade are doing this, so we did that. Or we spent two hours trying to moonwalk. My mum just saw how happy I was and she'd heard the opposite of that for so long. I think she thought it was a good thing. Just place them down okay. and step oh, away. <laughs> I think she messaged and said, Jade's lovely. Oh, yes. And she was very happy that I'd locked down with Jade because me being on my own in my flat and my head would have been horrific. And she just said, I think it was a very good thing that you did because the two of you have each other. fionn has been missing her boyfriend Ben for months. Now they can finally get together once again. Well, sort of. I can't even hug him because of the COVID-19, because of the rules. But I'm trying to his house with other people and abilities. So we're keeping our two metres apart. I feel excited, I feel happy to go see him today, yeah. I'm ready. I will have cuts to here. Yes, babe. And how are you coping anyway? I'm coping well, but I am missing you a lot. I do text you and ring you. But I'm keeping me busy doing jobs in the house, look after my animals and my pets. Is it? You made me realise how important it is to have a real relationship during this time. It has been lonely. It feels really nice to have a real intimate with Ben. He gives me nice presents and, and keeps me really positive. It makes me really happy. Yeah. Happy, babe. Love you too, baby. Bye, babe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, gorgeous. It's two months since Bradley's date in the park with Tom but he's not seen him since. Got cold feet. 
he was a really nice guy. He is a really nice guy. Um, and I could see him as a friend. But for me, there's just no connection there. There was no spark and we just didn't connect the way that I thought we would. Especially because of the image that I had of him during lockdown it was two complete different things and it just didn't match up to what, I guess, what I want from my specific other. Might be time to review the old Tinder profile. Well, my Tinder profile was a bit, um, it's quite long winded actually. <laughs> so those are pictures. Hey, uh, I love shitty jokes and cringy pickup lines. Please have a terrible sense of humour and witty banter. 45 tattoos and counting. I'm a model slash waiter, spending most of my days making terrible life choices, travelling films and food are my faves. 5'11", 6 foot. Um, imagine finding something serious on here. How groundbreaking. Message me. <laughs> oh, I didn't read this one. So there's one here. It's like, I'm down to make terrible life choices and travel with you at the same time. I'm like, that's cute. I love that. <laughs> Lockdown has totally changed my whole mentality towards relationships. I think I've learned to just wait and be patient. Um, it's such, a, such an important thing. Before, I did tend to jump in like head first, but not now. But it's just, you can't rush love. <laughs> I'm just going to talk to my um, love coach. Rebuilding her love life has been a lockdown mission for our Louise. Hi, Sophie. How are you? Really good, thank you. Good. So, how did your day go last week? Um, Helping her along the way has been an online love guru. I didn't fancy him. Uh, he didn't fancy me either. Which is fine, but I did have a bit of a wobble about that. And some of my old thoughts were creeping in. It's completely natural to feel that way. And the first step there is about honouring our feelings. And you know how to do that now through the work that we've done. Yeah. But every time we let someone else dictate our worth or our beauty, we're giving our power away. So yes. it's really about keeping your power and knowing that you are beautiful. So, Louise, you have become the most golden version of yourself, ready for the most golden version of love. I'm so excited for you. You've got this. I just want you to go out there and shine now. Yay! <laughs> Actually, it's about my choice. Not everyone's going to fancy me. I'm not going to fancy them, but... I just thought that's actually, it doesn't matter if they don't. This is about me. It's about me making a choice now. And I feel much more in control. OK, I think that's all right. I've got two necklace arms on, which I wouldn't normally wear, but I just thought, sod it, I'm going to wear it. Today's date is with a salesman from New Zealand. He had a really nice profile and he looked a bit like Patrick Swayze. If he is like he is in the pictures, oh, up, up, up. Come to Mama. <laughs> <laughs> this time, I, I feel, I do feel excited. And this is what I wanted, that kind of butterfly-type heart racing. <laughs> OK. Let's go meet my future husband. <laughs> Poor bugger. You must be Lauren. I am, yes. Wow, I'm You look nice exactly surprise. the same as you do in the picture. So do you. I'm not sure whether to stand up you and give you a hug or whether to do sort of social distancing. I'm really not just, sure how it's supposed just, to work. Just so. pretend like okay. virtual, I suppose. Right, okay. You look better in your pictures. I look better than my pictures. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good news. Much better. Oh, well, please about that. she. <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah. <laughs> do you look to the pictures? I looked at your pictures and I thought, he looks a bit like Patrick Swayze. Right. And you must get that lot. Occasionally. Do you? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Do you get asked to do the reenactment of the film? The lift, you mean? <laughs> I have done a few lifts, I must admit. The house that my parents bought, we had an orchard. And wow. it was a big orchard too. I mean, there's not many fruit that you could mention that we didn't have growing in that garden. Raspberries. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, we didn't have raspberries. Blackberries. No, we didn't have blackberries either, actually. That, yeah, no, OK. All right, I'll tell you what we had. Obviously, kiwi fruit. Yeah. Oh, tasty. Uh, avocados. 
Um, passion fruit. Passion fruit's my favourite. Nice. Pomegranates? Uh, no, didn't have pomegranates, no. No. So, are you a good salesman then? Um, can I be brutally honest? Mm. Bloody good. <laughs> Okay, someone, so you know, what, someone said to me how once, would you sell me? Hang on, somebody said to me once, you were a born salesman. I said, no, I wasn't really? a born salesman. I was a born a baby, just like everybody else. First Tuesday in every month, we would um, <clears> phone <throat> up all our existing customers. And I'd phone them and say, look, you're going to be invited to our putting competition. So anyway, we went out to this golf course. And he said, well, where, where, where's the golf clubs? And I said, did we say anything about golf clubs? I gave him a baseball bat. Now, I don't know if you've ever played golf. But trying to hit a golf ball into a hole with a baseball bat is not exactly easy. <laughs> Next month we did the same thing again. Phoned up to a film, two hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Having competition, so he comes up first, gets his puck, and says, "Where's the ball?" Balls is not getting there now. It's just like a huge amount of fun. I'm talking too much now. You've run out of juice. Yeah, I have. It shows who's been talking a lot and who hasn't. Yeah, well, you're a good listener. That's why we've got two of these and one of these. I know. So that we listen. What? It just... Look, right. <laughs> Not speak. What? Not speak. OK, I won't speak anymore, then. I'm going to time you. I must admit, when I'm training two some seconds. of the people that I work with, I always say about you know, two of these things. Yeah, he was all right. He just talked so much. It was just... Ah. Oh. He wasn't interested in me at all. He didn't seem to be. Didn't want to know anything about me. It was all about him. Sorry, darling. For Claire and Jade, the bubble has burst. As real life returns, Claire has made a big decision. <laughs> Is that meant to be a Christmas ornament? It's Christmas decoration. Oh, yeah, very festive. It is festive. What about hula hoop? No. Why? It's exercise. She's clearing out her flat to officially move in with Jade. Jade's place is um, minimalist, so it's very clean slate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's allowed. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Because when we move in together, she's like, we do, what, what's to move? I'm like, I have seven years' worth of stuff to move, so that's not coming to my house. So then it was, you can have the downstairs bathroom. So I said, I'm taking that. Love this already! Love my room! <laughs> I'm going to floor to ceiling and the ceiling, have things dangling and just fairy lights, so when someone, like a guest, comes over or what not to pee, they'll be like, what the hell is this room? And just it's called personality. Like <laughs> it's called personality. <laughs> In our relationship, it kind of fell into place, even even though it was forced into place via lockdown. But at the same point, like it fits. We've just kind of merged, I guess, quickly. But it doesn't feel like it's quick. It was just yeah. condensed. Aye. So it was just a fast forward, and yeah. There you go. But this is it. Well, for me, anyway. I'm. I'm. Shut up. <laughs> Aye. No. Like I think that'll be pretty much us. Yeah. Hopefully. Done. Does it look all right? It's a bit, bit titty for Lara, isn't it? Helped by her mentor, Louise has gone from strength to strength and man to man. Today, she is going on a second date with a fella she met last week for coffee. He smelt divine. Oh, my goodness. And I looked at him and I thought, oh, I went, oh, you're really nice. I have just met someone I'm really excited about, which I didn't think was going to happen. He messages me every morning, says good morning, and, um, you know, are you on your way to work, that sort of thing. And I said, yeah, and I've got a hot date later. So he said, hot date? Oh, good luck. <laughs> I said, it's with you. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> just funny. Lockdown makes you think about life. The biggest thing I learned was that I'll always be OK. It was about believing in myself. It was about seeing myself as a worthy person, knowing that I'm enough. 
Right, that'll do. Okay, so. Feeling good? I'm feeling good, yeah, I'm feeling great, thank you. I'm feeling really excited. I can sit back and let it happen, let life ha happen on its own. There's no pushing anymore. It's just happening. And I never thought I'd ever get to that stage. It's three months since lockdown forced Dean to move back in with his ex. Today, for Emma's birthday, Dean has big plans. Are you the birthday girl? Yeah. I'm just sure I'm not saying you're old, but if you were milk, I'd sniff you first. <laughs> Cheeky bye. Happy birthday, darling. Thank you. Oh, thank you. They're beautiful. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> A beautiful baby. I'll wear those later. I am starving, Jamesy. I can't wait for this afternoon tea. Yeah, me too. Oh, come on. Oh. Thank you, baby. You're welcome. I love it. Uh, yeah. I'm quite happy about the peas. <laughs> Dean's gone and booked a special afternoon tea at the local golf club. Since losing Isaac, we've never had any kind of understanding. Lockdown made us try harder with each other. And it's the first time I've ever seen him cry. You know, 20 years. Yeah, that happened in lockdown, that was... Yeah. Was, I never... Well, I felt that, like you listened. I felt like you were willing to sit there and listen. I never understood how Dean felt about it. And I never really believed that it affected him as much as it did me. I just naturally thought, I'm female. I carried our baby, um, you know, I, I felt, I guess, I've always punished myself about it and I didn't realise that Dean wasn't, feel, Dean, Dean didn't feel that way. Dean didn't blame me at all. You know, it was all in my head, but because I felt like he blamed me, I just, just shut off, you know, for such a long time. <laughs> I'm sorry. Me too. Grief never leaves you. You've just got to learn to, you know, compartmentalise it and go, OK, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, but I had this. Yeah, I know. And now I've got this, as in my memories. Yeah. And he would want us to carry on, he and we have to. I'd never really noticed how much he loves me and how much cared. Dean still has one more birthday surprise for Emma. I figured that we'd renew his vows. <laughs> That's why he couldn't find the engagement ring. <laughs> Would you yeah. be my wife again? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, wow. Wedding vows, circa 2013. Dean, you are my soulmate. I have loved you longer than I can remember. I'll love you further into the future than I can foresee. You're everything I want, you're just what I need, and you're more than I ever dreamed of having. I think, uh, you know, I've discovered no man is an island. You know, I, it's good to have other people there. It's good to have your family there. It's good to share your problems. It's good to share your life, really. You know. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting married again. Definitely. Do it right this time, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. There's no weight, there's no burden, there's no expectation. It's just how we were ten years ago. Thank you. <laughs> Having fun, enjoying spending time with each other and just it is exciting. Yeah, it is. Being happy in the world.
I did have this plan of being married by 25 and all this, but who, oh, no, no, it's just not gonna work, is it? Like, I just need to be patient and I'm gonna aim for like 30s. I think that's like a decent age. I'm a Libra, so I'm all about balance. I don't get a shit what star sign you are, but... Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> Still very different, but... Yeah. <laughs> but we find a middle ground somehow. <laughs> Tolerance. <laughs>